Well, welcome to another super helpful video from the GOCHE DM Pinball Repair Specialists. We're located in Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia. And today, here where we are, it's June 11th, and it's 10 degrees Celsius outside, which is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, as promised, we're finally doing a video on the rat trap score reels. How to disassemble and reassemble and make any adjustments on them. Now these are a super robust piece of engineering from Gottlieb. And once you fix them, you rarely have to do anything with them again. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the history of these things. They were first introduced uh, roughly in around 1954 in Gottlieb's four-player Super Jumbo. And uh, they carried on in multiplayer games for many, many years. However, from 1954 through to 59 for single-player games, they still used lightbox scoring method. But then on the game Miss Annabelle in 59, along came the Rat Trap score reel. And they finally met their demise in around 1966 with the games Subway and obviously Crosstown. And that brought in the Decagon reel. So I believe Gottlieb's King of Diamonds was the first machine with the Decagon reel and possibly the first machine not to have a push-up ball but an automatic ball kicker. Now... We have uh, the rat traps out of an actual game, Central Park, and we have them here in two states. We're going to show you the one on the right shortly, how to disassemble it, and the one on the left we've already disassembled, and we want to point out to you some of the componentry inside this game. So, let's have a look. What we have... We have the frame and the wires soldered onto the frame. And one thing you have to be really careful of, these wires get, they break away with cold solder joints after the years, so you always separate them apart and give them all a good little tug and that and make sure everything's okay. We have the spindle or main shaft that comes down here. Here's the coil case, the coil bracket goes on the back here, and the coil plunger hooks up, which we'll show you a little later onto a Onto, through a hole onto the um, plastic drive pole. Um, now, there's three separate stacks of switches. We have this switch here, which is always the lock-in switch. You can see that's a normally closed switch, so that opens it's on the end of stroke with the score reel. Uh, we have another switch here on its own, and it's on a different level of the cam, and we'll explain to you what that does later on. And then we have uh, the um, zero and the nine carryover switch to the next reel located here. Now remember on these games, for 1,000 points, you don't have a score reel, you'll have a light. Now, that's essentially the frame of these things. We have some adjustments here on these, these things here. Okay, so we have what we call a jam stop, and we have what we call an index pawl adjustment. The index pawl adjustment is the frame. This is the frame, and it's adjustable by loosening an Allen key here, an Allen screw on the back, where the jam stop is adjusted by loosening this Allen screw, let's get a look at that. That one, that one there. Now, unless someone's majorly mucked around with them, normally the only adjustment you have to do is this one for the index pawl, and we'll show you that when it all goes back together. So let's show you the disassembly of one of these now. Now, a word of warning, before you disassemble one of these rat trap score reels, of course, you have the other two to make reference to, but it's a good idea to take a lot of pictures at this point in time before you undo these screws here. 
once you undo these screws, this plate here is going to come off. That's like a cover plate. Now, we have this score reel pointing to zero. And you know you're at zero by virtue of the fact there's a, a little hole there, as you can see. And the fact of the matter is, is that a reel is actually on zero. And you can also see on this one, there's like a extension on the frame that shows you that. However, on some of the earlier ones, I think I have a, a Tropic Isle, it doesn't have that little extension, so you just got to be a bit aware of that. There was probably a couple of styles of these made. Well, there certainly was. They used to have a, uh, a form wire for an earth on them, or a common, and they no longer have that. You'll know it when you see it. I don't have one of those to show you. So the secret is we're going to undo these screws, but before we do, what you've got to take note, this plate here is just a pressure plate to hold the score reel down, but this plate here is the um, grounding type plate. It goes through these pins here and here and there. Two small and one large. So when you put it back together, that's what you've got to do. Okay, so we're going to unscrew these three screws now and take the score reel out. Now, we've taken that plate off, and there are the, the studs we were referring to, the larger one and the two smaller ones. The other thing is you may notice that this is like an arrow, maybe a bit hard to see, and it's pointing to zero as well, so it's pointing to the zero position. Okay, so the next thing we have to do and you really need to do this to make life easier for you you have to unsolder this wire from the board that will allow you to move the board out of position to get it right out of the road having done that the next thing to do is undo these two screws here now when you put these back together there's a little bit of an adjustment on those as well but we'll cover that when we're reassembling Now, we've unsoldered that wire and we've taken the two screws out. Now we just gently lift the board up and over. And it's elongated in the end there, so it's got to come off that stud. So just be, be gentle with it. Now you're more or less seeing like we had when we opened the video and showed you. It's just that the, the one score reel we showed you prior didn't have a circuit board on it because it's the um, the tens reel and it doesn't do anything so the, the the circuit boards are to do with the match and in this case and the high scores and the in the hundreds reel so now we've got the whole thing exposed and you can actually see what we're going to do now we're going to remove a circlip off here and a washer off there now we've removed that clip and washer. Now we're going to unsolder the wire off the coil to take it right out and then we're going to undo the screws to take the coil uh, stock bracket out. Now the next thing we have to do is loosen these two screws here on the coil stop bracket and there's a nut behind those. Uh, we'll, um, take them off and we'll take the coil stop bracket out and we can remove the coil. Actually, no nut on those. The screws just come off. The coil stop comes out. There's, insulation There's a bit of insulation paper on the back there that comes off. And now we can just lift the coil off. We'll remove the plunger. Now you can see how that plunger fitted onto through a hole in the plunger. We'll get hold. Give us a look at that one. Well, there it goes. There's a hole there, and it sits on there like that for the drive. And that comes off, and that plunger will come out, and we'll polish that on the on the buffer. Now this is where you need to be a bit of a Houdini. So we're going to try and show you this quite easily. What it is, you've got to take that whole spindle off, that gear spindle, but you've got to push things out of the road. Now we would normally take this spring off here before we do that. So we're taking that the big return spring off. Now we're going to take the one off the index pole which is here. That's the index pull, or part of it anyway. That comes off. You can see that's been taken off now. Now, just before we remove 
this off the shaft it is a little tight we've noticed that this is bent so we're going to have to be careful of that we're going to have to pull that out of the road and remove the shaft here's the unit we've just removed with the cams on it and the gear on the bottom that gear is where the index pole falls in so we'll have to clean that now the next thing we're going to do is drive is remove the the actual pole arm and this is where you've got to get the sprit everink out of the road so we'll have to pull that over once again pull that out the road and off it comes so I know his fingers were in the road there I just want to show you what that is here you go we just took the clip off there and this whole arm comes off like that and we've just got that piece of plastic there now sometimes they do break they break away so you'd need to replace those if they were broken all these parts have got to be cleaned now now what we've revealed here is the that's the index pole he's just taking the the circlip off that he's got it he's already got the spring off it he's got to push those switches out of the road you shouldn't really have to take the switch stack off but you may get you'll get away with it probably a bit rusty so he'll take that off okay so this is the index pole that is the thing there's the pole that falls into that uh, gear on the bottom of the cam wheel and um, that was a little bit rusty inside so we'll take that out and we'll give it a good clean um, you can see near the spring anchor here it's quite rusty uh, that'll, that'll clean up very nicely so this has had a fair bit of neglect this machine so what we're going to do now we're going to go away and we're going to clean all those parts up everything that we've just pulled out all has to be cleaned we'll put them in the ultrasonic cleaner give them a bit of a clean and everything and then we'll put the thing back together again just brush the loose dirt off it as well always helps so yeah we'll prepare that for cleaning and then we'll go on to the next part of this video and show you how to put it back together and make any adjustment that may be necessary now we're just going to start reassembly of the score reel that we've cleaned up but first of all we thought we might show you the one without the printed circuit board on it the adjustments it's a, probably a little bit easier to to see now just before we carry on I want to make mention that there's an excellent article in pin wiki on these score reels along with other tips and tricks pin wiki has been going a very long time and um, it's a great reference point for anyone to have a look at things and then follow up uh, as a matter of fact the Chris Hibbler has linked a couple of our videos to some of the th items in there so that, that could be useful for you as well. Now let's just attempt to show you what happens here. This is a little bit awkward, so let me let me see. So we drive the pull, we're gonna push the plunger in, we drive it, but it comes straight back. There's no positive click. Now the reason that is, is the index pole isn't checking the drive of the gear tooth. So here's your index pole down here. I've got to hold this. This is it right here. That, that pawl. Now what the problem is, that pawl, see it just fell into the tooth? Now I'll drive that again, and it works that time. Now it won't. It's only out a little bit, but it has to be adjusted. Now remember the way you adjust that, so we need that pawl, to fall cleanly into that tooth it, it's just sitting on the top of it you adjust it by moving this uh, undoing this adjustment here and moving it now that's done with a, uh, a 9 64th spanner and I've already loosened that by hand so I'm just going to 
I haven't loosened it enough. Now I've just made that adjustment and now we should be able to watch it. There it goes. See it's not going backwards. And I've adjusted it so that there's a slight bit of movement. A slight bit of movement like that between the gear and the pull. Now appreciate these things are 60 odd year old. They get worn out. And it's great that they even put that adjustment there. So look at that, it works perfectly now. Now the next adjustment to check is the jam stop. Now, this is the jam stop. So the jam stop is this bit here, and it's adjustable by loosening that Allen screw there. And the concept is, is that the drive pull, or the, the step up pull they call it, I better use the right terminology, that step up pull there, which is part number A3131, and the jam stop is A3113, that has to be resting cleanly against the drive pull to allow the drive pull not to have any backward movement. That's fine. It's hard can we see it I don't know if I can get it any better than that let's try again you got to look at the way these things work there it is so that shiny bit there that edge of that is going back in against that jam stop very similar to any of the Gottlieb early steppers that had a jam stop preventing the drive pull going back in so that's adjusted okay. So the only adjustment we needed to really make was the um, was on the index pull stop. And that stop is called A3115. So there you go, that's how you adjust them. Now, what we'll do now, we'll go ahead and we'll put the other one back together and we'll show you how we do that. See that, that's, that's great. Now, remember it was going backwards before. Perfect. Now we're going to fit the step up pull back on to where it belongs. So the idea is you pull the index pull out of the way, pop that mechanism down on there like that, and now you have to put the cams back in, and it is necessary to pull out of the road the switches. You've just got to watch what you're doing. There's no easy way to do it, just till you get it right. like anything a little bit fiddly you don't have the springs on the um, the long return spring on now you can put it on all right we're just going to put that coil back in and that piece of insulation between the coil and the stop so not rocket science here just fit that over the extension on the arm slide your coil in coil stop back in now just while we're doing that we had find, found on this that this spring here this is the return spring for the drive arm or what did we say got we call it the step up pull mechanism we had to cut a couple of loops off that that spring was way too weak now, a lot of people say, oh yeah, you know, you shouldn't do that, but, you know, sometimes you just got to. We haven't got any brand new springs of those. Now, these springs are 60 years old, and they it had lost some elasticity. It's a little bit rusty. We've cleaned it up the best we can. So, don't be frightened to do that if you need to. Okay, there's two cam levels here. There's the bottom cam and the top cam. Now, and the switches operate off those cams. Now, the switchy, switches in this are reasonably simple to understand. Um, I may have made an error earlier on. I think I may have misled you, but not intentionally. So, the bottom cam operates this switch here. Now, this switch is your ninth position carryover switch. This switch here is simply your lock-in switch or an end stroke switch and these two switches over here the inside switch 
is the run out switch and the outside switch is the circuit to the reset relay so that's your zero position switch now when you operate the switches I mentioned earlier that you can see the longer part of the top of the cam here is pointing toward this on the frame so that means that's at zero position so if we have a look here we have the lock-in switches closed the 0 to 9 switch is open the run out switch is closed is I beg your pardon the run out switch is open and the reset switch is closed or the circuit to the reset relay so when we operate that we go 0 1 see the lock in opening up there 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 now you watch the 9 switch it's now closed and now we'll go to the zero position and there we're at zero so at zero we have the inside switch open and the outside switch closed so it's fairly simple Right, now we'll actually reassemble this um, rat trap reel. The next thing to do is to fit the printed circuit board back on. So we've checked all the wires are all soldered on good. You just got to get it under the groove there. Now, there are screws with nuts on them. So you fit those. Now these printed circuit boards, you have to get them in the centre. So at the moment, you can see that that's nowhere near being in the centre. The board is overlapping onto the top of the cam mech. So what you do, you adjust it, and you have the pointy bit here that points to zero. You get it roughly in the middle of that two marks there, and you'll generally have them fairly right. So the idea is that you've got to have clearance around the edges so that's a fairly important thing to do. Just tighten them up. Now we've already adjusted the uh, poles on this, the um, actual jam stop was okay, but the index pole needed a little bit of a tweak. And remember when these are under power too, they're firing a bit harder, but I already mentioned we did cut that spring because it was just way too weak you could just feel it you know you sense these things when you know so we're soldering back on the wire onto the, uh, the grounding here and we're just soldering the wires back onto the coil itself right now the next is to put the score reel back on the machine now this is a little bit fiddly uh, you almost need three hands and the main reason is, is Graham will just turn that over and show you on the bottom there you have that um, contact pad and that's springy and it's pushing back up against you. Now remember what we said earlier? At the moment we've got this pointing to the zero, the small one here and here and the large one there. So set it up the same on your... Pop it on. Now notice how he's keeping his fingers on the outside of that. Put the reel back on. This is what we mean about being tricky. There you go. Now, once you get it to that position, you can then put the plate on. Now that plate, it doesn't matter where you put that, like as far as holes go, it's not, yeah, it's not <laughs> no right. relevance. It's just, uh, I guess, the hold down for the score reel. Pop it on, tighten it up. We've cleaned each of the score reels in the background. We've simply, um, some people like to use Novus 2. We just use a spray and wipe. Which is commercially available and we use a thing called Gumption. Gets all the black lines off it. It's a multi-purpose cleaner as you can see there. It's got a bit of grit in it. So it, it works well. 
but of course you use what you wish to use. These are very hardy, you don't seem to have to worry about them having any problems with the, uh, the numbers coming off. Now the only thing I will point out that because these are made of tin, they're very flimsy, so it is possible you may bend them. There you go, it's all working now. Just check my wires are They're hard to get at, to operate. That's the only thing they didn't engineer into it, a manual lever to operate it, or make it easier to operate, should we say. So, all in all, that's how you disassemble and rebuild and adjust a rat trap score reel. Now, one thing I did forget to mention, uh, that printed circuit board, we actually did apply a little bit of um, PBR grease onto that. That helps greatly when doing these sort of things. That's really the only place you need to put any lubrication and mind you that's a special PBR grease. So that's it. We hope you enjoyed this video and we once again remind you to give us the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot more videos coming up in the future. So this has been another Goat Shed presentation. <laughs>